we believe it was because of this, that ours was the only American church which did not divide over the slavery issue during the Civil War. A century later, we still have no written creed, no declaration of faith, except what the Bible says. In considering all the commandments of Jesus, we believe we must obey them. For example, in the matter of baptism, we believe that it is necessary for a believer to be baptized as a part of God's provision for salvation. Jesus said, except a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The apostles preached that men should repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. We believe also that baptism is for those who are old enough to make a confession of their own faith in Christ as Savior. For this reason, we do not practice infant baptism. Baptism, according to the New Testament, must be preceded by faith and repentance. Jesus was about 30 years old when he submitted himself to John's baptism, as the scripture says, to fulfill all righteousness. It was all inspiring to visit the spot where Jesus went down into the Jordan River to be baptized. This act of baptism was not a discreet wetting of one's brow in a secluded corner of the church. It took all of oneself into the water, in the plain view of any who wanted to watch, to visibly, openly, and unconditionally declare that he was giving himself completely into the hands of God. Something happens at baptism. Paul says, we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, Romans 6, 4. In the matter of communion, the Lord's Supper was instituted by Jesus as a memorial of his death when he said, This do in remembrance of me. The early Christians did so each Lord's Day as they met to worship. As we read in Acts 20, verse 7, and on the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread. We believe that we need the blessing of this communion with Christ every bit as much as the early church. And Christ invites all who belong to him to partake. On matters where there is no decisive position in the scripture, we believe that each Christian should have the liberty to hold to his own opinion without binding that opinion on others. Our church is not characterized by well-known orators or theologians with wide followings. Rather, we believe the genius of the church is the individual Christian serving Christ in his local congregation, in his own community. We strongly believe in the proper and adequate preparation for the Christian ministry, but we do not believe that there should be any distinction between the paid minister and those whose Christian service is volunteer. We believe and put into practice the priesthood of the believer. A notable member of our movement who believed in serving Christ where he was was James A. Garfield, a preaching elder in the church. When he became president of the United States, he let nothing stand in the way of his devotion to Christ. Once one asked why he had refused to schedule an important meeting of state on a Sunday morning, he replied that he had a standing appointment for that time around the Lord's table. And on another occasion, when questioned about his beliefs, he gave this clear statement about the Christian church. We call ourselves Christians or disciples. We believe in God the Father. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and our Savior. We regard the divinity of Christ as the fundamental truth of the Christian system. We believe in the Holy Spirit, both as to his agency and conversion, and as dweller in the heart of Christians. We accept the Old and New Testaments as the inspired word of God. We believe in the future punishment of the wicked and the future reward of the righteous. We believe that the deity is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. We observe the institution of the Lord's Supper on every Lord's Day. To this table, we neither invite nor debar. We say it is the Lord's table for all the Lord's children. We plead for the union of God's people. The Bible is our only discipline. We maintain that all ordinances should be observed as they were in the days of the apostles. The Christian, the one who wants no other name, is not trying to be difficult. He wants lovingly and openly to let people know that he is trying to be a follower of Christ. 
In our desire to return to first century Christianity, we have no wish to wear beards and robes or walk with sandals on dusty highways. We believe God has put us into an age of space stations and the internet, and that the Spirit of God can be as present and as much at home in our hearts today as He was in the lives of the first century Christians. And we believe that the words of Jesus are just as needed and just as applicable today as when He first spoke them. One of 